Okay, here I am again. This is about my trip to uh, Nashville, Memphis, uh, Nesbitt, and uh, Faraday, Louisiana. Um, I had three, three or four really good friends in my life. Well, in my later life, uh, my friend West, uh, David Alexander Brown, a.k.a. Um, Rumpelstiltskin, uh, you know, or entire, the entire West Coast, Hayseed, Aloha Dave, that's what he called himself, all these different names. Um, and then Roger Stomperud, who played bass with me for many years on and off, and he also engineered a lot of my music, and he also, uh, he did a lot for me, that guy. He wrote up my whole website. He, he kept track of things really good. And uh, my other friend... Tony O'Regan, who is uh, a great artist and taught me a lot about art and has become a very good friend of mine. And then this story is mostly about Ed Cerny. Now, he was a, he lived in Burnaby. He was a rock, uh, had a rock contracting company. They, they put the rock work on the Alex Fraser Bridge and he worked for years like that. He's actually got an an uh, artifact his dad found in the Capilano River that's an old, uh, looks like a pounding, a native pounding thing for uh, making pounding corn or something. It's a beautiful piece of work. Um, he plays steel guitar and uh, he has a, uh, what's it called, a bud or showman um, steel guitar. And uh, I, I met him at the Best Western Hotel where I used to play in... Uh, over in uh, Coquitlam, he used to come over there for dinner and he'd have a couple of wine and listen and we'd talk away. And then uh, we became really good friends. And then uh, when Bill Crompton died over in uh, Burnaby, when I was living with Bill Crompton at that apartment, uh, Ed helped me move out to uh, BC Housing, Coon Towers, where we met uh, Slade Steel. We always joke about that in the elevator. Uh, he was an old rubby there that lived in there. He says, who are you guys? We said, oh, I'm Richard. I'm I'm Ed. Who are you? Slade Steel. Anyway, uh, that Coon Towers was quite the joint, full of drug addicts. It finally ended up getting bed bugs, and I, uh, I happened to meet Marcia at the right time, I guess. But anyway, I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you that on my Coon Tower stories. Anyway, this is me and Ed got talking once and we decided we were going to take a trip down to Nashville because he's a big country music fan. And so uh, we uh, booked our flight, uh, planned on going to Nashville. And then I don't know what we if we'd planned on Memphis too, but anyway, we talked about and booked our flights and went to the airport and I took a week off or something. And uh, there was another guy that... I used I met on the cruise ships years ago named Chester Lobodinsky and he used to come on the cruise ships he lived out in the midwest somewhere uh uh I forget the name of the town Indiana he was in Indiana anyway he uh I used to correspond with him he used to send me all kinds of country tapes of you know Conway Twitty and tons and tons of them and uh he always wanted, thought I was the greatest thing in the world. He had all my music. and Anyway, when he heard we were going to Nashville, he decided he was going to meet us down there because he'd been there many, many times. And so uh, we, uh, I wish I could remember the name of the town he lived in in Indiana, but I guess it doesn't matter. Anyway, so we flew into Nashville. We had a hotel booked in the old town. And... Uh, Ed and I flew in. I think the first night we went down to the Strip where they have Tootsies and these uh, nightclubs where the Ryman Theater is and everything and we, that where the old Nashville. That's the nicest part of Nashville anyway. And we went down there, me and Ed, and we, well, we were drinking scotch and everything. We had a, there were some girls in there and we had a few dances with the gals and listened to the country bands and walked up and down the street and then uh, <clears throat> went and looked at the... Uh, I don't know. We, I'll tell you a little bit more about downtown. Um, we went and uh, I think it was the next day. 
before maybe before we met Chester, we went and looked at the old Ryman Theater where Hank Williams and all these people, you know, Kitty Wells and everybody in the country business in the old days used to sing there. It's a sort of a brick building, if I remember correctly. And then we went down to uh, we went to the uh, Tootsie's is a little nightclub uh, right on the strip there where they have uh, where Willie Nelson wrote Crazy for Patsy Cline. He sold that song for fifty dollars, all the rights to it too. And uh, and we went to the uh, the um, what was it called? Um, Oh gee, I wrote his name down. The guy that did uh, Waltz Across Texas, Ernest Tubbs. Uh, we went to the Ernest Tubb Record Store and the uh, Groon Guitar Store, where they had all kinds of really nice old guitars. They had uh, a guitar of Chet Atkins in there, and uh, in a that was in a glass case, of course. And then they had. All kinds of, you know, like Dobro guitars, and it's a really well-known guitar store. Everybody goes there. And then uh, we met up with uh, um, Chester, came to town, so he took us out. He liked buffets, so he tried to take us out to this buffet for food. The food down there is kind of different because they had, like, uh, uh, you know, steamed turnip greens and, uh, I don't know, different, some grits like uh, hominy and grits, kind of an idea and everything. So uh, then he took us on a tour, and we went over to the uh, new old old Grand Ole Opry. They have a museum there where you can stand on the piece of the stage that was actually out of the Ryman Theater with the mic there where everybody used to sing. It's the actual piece of the stage. So we stood on there, and I think I've got lots of pictures of this stuff somewhere. And there was all kinds of clothes in there, like uh, all of Hank Snow's outfits and Marty Robbins. And there was like zillions of guitars of all these famous people, you know, that had their names on them. I, I've got pictures everywhere. I just can't remember them offhand. And Marty Robbins' car was in there and some of his outfits. And uh, uh, that was a really great uh, museum. I mean, and we went to another place in Nashville, too, that had handprints on the ground in the cement, Jerry Lee Lewis's handprint was there. My hands fit in just perfect, so I figured out how big his hands were. And uh, I wish I could tell you more about that museum there, but if you look it up online in the Grand Ole Opry Museum, it's it'll show you everything. There's just so many guitars and and stuff in there, it's hard to fathom, you know. And then... Chester took us on a little tour. We went and saw where Johnny Cash's house is. That's the house where uh, Chris Christopherson parachuted in to because he was trying to get Johnny Cash to do Sunday morning coming down. And uh, he could never get a hold of Johnny Cash, so he actually used to be a paratrooper in the uh, Army. So he he parachuted into Johnny Cash's yard and made him listen to that song, and then Johnny Cash had a huge hit with it. And uh, Ed, my friend, took a piece of the rock off uh, the rock wall around that house. He still got it, too. I think I had a piece at one time. But then we, right next to his house was Roy Orbison's house. We looked at it, too. And then we also looked at uh, George Jones's house. He's one of my all-time country favorites. And then uh, we went out to Twitty City or Twitter City, whatever it's called, for Conway Twitty lived. that's a quite the place. It's all it's a fancy place, sort of like a theme park almost. It was all flowers and nice brick buildings. A lot of brick down in uh, back east because they they don't have the trees we have in the west. So, but Conway Twitty he he had a, tons of hits. And then we went and saw ta- where Tammy Wynette was buried, and she's in a crypt. And right next to her is is uh, little Jimmy Dickens. Uh, he bought a crypt next to her because he liked her so much, I guess. I heard another story that uh, where Marilyn Monroe's buried in a crypt, another guy went and bought the one right above him and buried himself upside down. Can you believe that? Anyway, we went around all the graveyards. Uh, we saw Hank Snow's grave. It says, uh, still moving on, on his grave. Uh, and I took pictures of all these graves, and I've got a picture I made called Famous Graves, 
and I took a piece of grass off each grave or a flower or something and I pasted it all in this big frame. Um, kind of morbid, but it's kind of neat in a way. We went and saw Marty Robbins' grave, Red Foley, Ernest Tubb. Oh, I, there's so many I can't remember them all. Um, the Ernest Tubb record store, of course, and uh, we went to went on Ernest Tubb's touring bus. It was like an old old bus, pretty small, and it had sort of these kind of wooden bunk beds in it. It was very rustic, man. It was a long time ago, though, in the 50s. Uh, and it, it was just like a, like a Greyhound bus, only like an old Greyhound bus. And it had like a little kitchen coffee table thing. Um, and, you know, like the bunk beds in the back. I had a bus out in Calgary, I forgot to mention, too, when I was in the Shakedown, or not Shakedown, the Richard Step Band, Derek bought us a bus. It finally broke down on the freeway and we uh, le- abandoned the damn thing. It it was so old and hard to drive. It had no power. It hit a little hill. It would slow right down. But it had uh, like the same idea, kitchen, and it had a big bedroom thing in the back all carpeted with, uh, we used to store our equipment in. Anyway, back to the Nashville thing. Um, we went and seen, uh, he introduced to us to a guy down there that uh, worked at the, Les, the Gibson Les Paul factory, so I can't remember the guy's name, but we never went through that factory. We, we did go to uh, RCA Studios where Elvis recorded many, Heartbreak Hotel and oh, if you look that one up, everybody's recorded there in the Nashville. Floyd Kramer was the house piano player for Elvis and all these people. And then there was another area in Nashville he took us. It's sort of like an alley. I should have looked up the name first, but it uh, where all the country guys used to drink there, Chris Christopherson, Merle Haggard, you know. I, I become a big fan of Chris Christopherson. I wish I would have seen him live. If he ever comes to Vancouver again, I'm going to go see him. But uh, Merle Haggard and all all my favorites used to, George Jones all used to drink down there. It's it's somewhere in downtown Nashville. It's, uh, you know, the, a famous alley or something. I guess all the guys were alley cats, who knows. But uh, And then we went to the, uh, there was a Civil War, or a museum there that was full of all these old uh, Confederate outfits. Me and Ed went through that together. And there was like really old Steinway pianos, the old kind that weren't, uh, they they were sort of like a square, old-fashioned, before they made the long grand pianos. They were, uh, I forget, one was out of the, one of the president's houses and, uh, you know, from the old south. And it was, uh, and, but the outfits in there were really neat. And there was actually a uh, an atom bomb there. Of course, it wasn't a live bomb, but it, it shows you how big they were. We went and I think we took some pictures of that. I I should uh, I should have made this thing with pictures, you know. But anyway, from Nashville, um, after we did all the graves and went and seen the downtown part, because we we were going to come back there anyway. So we went down to uh, we rented a car and drove down to Memphis, and uh, Memphis is where. You know, Elvis and Carl Perkins, Jerry Lee Lewis, Roy Orbison, Sun Records is there. And uh, so we went down and we got a hotel down in Memphis. And uh, the countryside's really neat on the drive down there. It's sort of flat. and uh, They don't have the big evergreen trees like we have in B.C. here, but uh, uh, it's very different, you know, and a lot of brick buildings and old-fashioned buildings, uh, not much wood. But we went down to Memphis, and we got this hotel, and out our window we could see that pyramid uh, building they have down there on the river. I guess it's the Mississippi still down there um, with the bridges over it. And the that pyramid hotel is where a lot of people put on concerts. Elvis played there, and it's a famous concert venue there, so it looks like a, a sort of like a black pyramid with glass, you know. And then we were down at the end of the end of the one of this long street in Memphis, and so we decided to walk up to Beale Street. That's the main drag 
for all the blues clubs and uh, we couldn't believe how dead it was downtown Memphis. There was hardly anybody walking around. It was like kind of like an abandoned city or something. It was a strange looking place. And we got to Beale Street. Of course, it's like a, a it's a you know popular place for tourists. They have BB King's Club there, and they have uh, this other club we went into. Uh, it's got all these guitars hanging from the ceiling that are signed by. You know, Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, Johnny Winter, Eric Clapton, they're all hanging from s- the ceiling in this restaurant. They, all the guys used to go there and jam, I guess. And uh, then we went, we had, me and Ed decided, we walked up and down Beale Street for a while and looked at all the stuff, and then we uh, we decided to go uh, have some ribs because they're famous for Memphis ribs and stuff. So we went to this ribs place and went in there, it was quite the place. I'd seen the couple next to us. They got this great big piece of beef that was like medium rare. And it was like a, sort of like a big thick steak for two. And then so me and Ed decided we were going to have ribs. So we ordered a whole rack of ribs each. <laughs> and it came with pork and beans and uh, cornbread. And I forget what else, fries or something. But Oh, God, we had been drinking scotch all night and going so excited being in Memphis where all the music had come from. And uh, so we uh, ate all these ribs and everything, went back to the hotel, and God, I I don't think I felt good for the whole trip after that. I felt sick after that, eating all those ribs. The next day we got up and we went out to Elvis's uh, mansion. Um, And uh, so we took the tour through the the house, Elvis's house, and it was, it was a beautiful place. The huge rock wall around it, uh, around this estate is something that Ed, first thing Ed said was, look at that wall, that cost a fortune nowadays, because he was in the rock business, so he was pretty impressed, and the house had a lot of stone, I think, and uh, it wasn't super big, but it it had, uh, when you went in the front door, there was a room with a grand piano sitting in it. We weren't allowed to go in that. Then we went in this other room. I think it was called like the Jungle Room or something where Elvis used to party with all his buddies and there was a pool table in there and a bunch of stuff like that. I uh, we weren't allowed to go upstairs either where he died. Uh, and then we go at the back. There's uh, some buildings out the back. One big building that we went through was just lined with all of Elvis's gold records, like just walls of them. Uh, these are the real gold records he got. And we walked up and down and marveled at it. You know, it's like overwhelming, there's so many. And uh, all of his, whole bunch of his outfits, you know, that he wore and stage outfits. Um, I think even the gold jackets in there that he wore on one of his early albums. And, and then there's a separate building again, um, which is full of like more stuff, all these trophies and CDs that came out. And it's another huge building just full of stuff. It's really neat. And in the backyard the, behind these buildings, there's sort of like a place where they used to ride horses and stuff like that. But there's two. The one gallery is all full of gold records and the other one's full of CDs and trophies and I, I think outfits too and all that. And then you walk around the corner and there's the grave graves there. It's Elvis's grave and uh, his mother and his father's grave are all there together. So you can stand and look at those. Um, and uh, so we stood there and I don't know what we did, said a prayer, looked at it. I reached over and grabbed a little piece of grass beside that's right beside Elvis's grave for my souvenir collection for my famous graves. And when I was walking out, a bird shit on my head. <laughs> and someone said, oh, well, that's probably the ghost of Elvis. <laughs> he shouldn't be taking grass off his grave. Anyway, uh, what was his name? Vernon. Vernon was his dad's name. Um, I can't remember his mother's name offhand, but anyway, everybody knows that sort of. Then we went down, and I don't know if we went down from Memphis that day, one day or when we came back from I think we did it on our way back from uh, no we went on on the way down I guess we went to see Jerry Lee Lewis's house it's in Nesbitt 
uh, Mississippi, just south of Memphis, not that far away. So we went down there, and uh, we finally found it. It's got another big rock wall that's on 88 acres, like the piano with a lake. But now it's a museum. You can go and tour through the house. It's got all his stuff in there. But when we went there, there was a big padlock on the gate with a chain, and we yelled and banged a little bit. Nobody came out. I don't know if anybody was there or not. Who knows? Maybe he was touring. or It sort of seemed like nobody... Well, it didn't seem like... It just seemed like that they had it all locked up so you couldn't get in. And the fence around it was a big rock fence also and cement. And it had graffiti all over it about Jerry Lee Lewis, you know, from fans that had written on it. And uh, we, it was quite a nice big house too. Not like Elvis's, but it was pretty big too, like a ranch, more like a rancher or something. And But it's on a big acreage out in the country, way out in the country. And... Uh, then we we went and uh, I picked up a couple of acorns and a few souvenirs off the ground. It's too bad that we couldn't have seen a caretaker or something because I'm such a fan of Jerry Lee. And, and uh, Anyway, I was thrilled to be at his house. And uh, then I think, or then we went through uh, Elvis's uh, when we were, the day we were at Elvis's house, we also went to the restaurant across the street. There was an Elvis restaurant. And uh, at the restaurant, there's a whole bunch of more stuff of his, like his cars, all these Cadillacs and the memorabilia of Elvis's is over there. And I went in the restaurant. We, I think we had a hamburger or something. But I told the waitress, why aren't you playing Elvis music? They had some kind of crappy music playing through the speakers in the background. I thought, here you go to the Elvis Cafe and they're not even playing Elvis music, for God's sakes. Uh, and then we went through his airplane uh, it's called Taking Care of Business. Um, his, his big airplane that he used to, well, it's not big, it's a DC-3 or something. But we went in there, walked through there, and there was like a lounge part. And then there was, a, I think, a little bit of a, I can't remember if there was a sleeping area for the the band members. I, I guess there was. But in the back was this big bedroom that was Elvis's and it had this huge bed with a huge uh, seat uh, uh, you know like a seat belt that went over the whole bed to strap you in at night so you didn't fall out in case you were flying somewhere and hit an air pocket I always remember that big bed with the big uh, big belt over it and uh, then we drove down to uh, Faraday Louisiana we decided we we're going to go down and see where Jerry Lee was born and came from So we drove down through Mississippi. Ah, We stopped at a restaurant, I think, for breakfast. There was all these fat guys sitting on these little chairs, you know, like the up at the counter with those little round uh, stools that you sit on with the chrome. And all their asses were hanging over the edge. They're all fat. Everything's buffet. You go to this big, huge buffet in the morning, you know, like with bacon and ham and all these eggs and, you know, turnip greens and grits and the same old thing, you know. But we seen what we did see a lot down there was that all these armadillos. A lot of them get hit on the highway. Those things roll up into a little ball that just like a, looks like a small beach ball when they're scared or something to protect themselves because they got this armor on them. And then from there we went to uh, down to Natchez. Uh, there's songs about the Natchez Bridge over the Mississippi. I was so excited, man. I couldn't believe it. I was down there. Uh, where all that music came from that I, you know... And on the way down, we'd stopped at a cotton field, you know, down in Louisiana, you know, where the cotton fields are by the Mississippi River. I remember hearing Jerry Lee's songs or or Jerry Lee's story where they whipped up onto the levee. Well, the big levees are what keeps that river from going all over the place into the fields. And... uh, Ed took a hunk of cotton. It was kind of neat to see cotton plants. There was cotton, the, the, the uh, whatever they are, the flowers open up and turn into like fluffy cotton. And uh, he put one on like a mustache. I got a picture of him somewhere. Um, yeah. When those cotton balls get rotten, you can, can't pick very much cotton. In the old cotton fields back home. Well, down in Louisiana, just about a mile from a Texacana, 
in them old cotton fields back home. Um, anyway, we got to Faraday. It's just like a little teeny little hole in the wall, nothing there much. And uh, we drove around. We found uh, there. there's a museum there. I, I don't think we actually went through it. Um, it's not a very good one. It's the sort of the town one, but um, we actually found uh, Jerry Lee's house. I think this is actually the second house because the very, very first one where he lived with his parents looked dif- was different. And he did live in this one too. But anyway, his sister lives there, Frankie Jean Lewis. She was living there with her husband, Marion. And uh, it's a it's an old, old kind of small little rustic house. And, and then uh, we got out of the car and knocked on the door and this, and this, I think it was the guy answered first. And he said, oh, yeah. Oh, I'll go get Frankie Jean. I thought, really? Jerry Lee's sister? You're going to bring her over here? I, I couldn't believe us. Believe it. And so she comes around the corner. She's so friendly. Hi, guys. She got these two little rugrats, dogs. One of them bit Ed. <laughs> and uh, she says, come on in. Oh, come on in. So we go in the back door of this place. And uh, it's like a rec room full of all kinds of... There's a TV there. There's an old piano in there that used to be John Lennon's. And a uh, whole bunch of stuff like that. And all these videos. She said, uh, here, come on, I'll take you through the house. And so we went up into the house from the back uh, little rec room or whatever it's called. And in the house, there's a big grand piano in there. It was Jerry Lee's and there's some fiddles and guitars and uh, all kinds of stuff, even. And we went in his bedroom. His pipes are in there that he he smoked pipes all the time, that guy. And his clothes that he, from some of his movies are hanging in the closet where he did, uh, I forget one of that movie he did, uh, very early movie. Open on it, honey, it's your lover boy and me. That's a knock in. Right down the high school rock in. Get your rock in shoes. You box blown a fuse. Everybody rocking, everybody bopping, bopping at the high school hop. Anyway, he's got the clothes from that movie and, uh, you know, the pipes and all that stuff. And then went in another bedroom that used to be uh, Linda Gales, Lewis's bedroom. Now she was a star that in her own right that plays like Jerry Lee. She's still playing. I'm friends with her too. Uh, I've never actually met her personally, shaking hands, but I'm friends with her on Facebook and everything else. And she knows the story about me and Frankie Jean. So we're kind of close now because Frankie Jean died. And uh, uh, Frankie Jean used to actually sell my CDs in her little store down there that I sent down to her. Um, she liked my music a lot, my gospel songs and everything. And uh, she used to tell me stories about when they were young. Frankie Jean did about, uh, you know, they'd sit around playing the piano. Jerry Lee would sit and practice when he was a little kid for hours and hours. He liked it so much and you know, he couldn't even, feet couldn't even reach the floor. And then his dad would have to come in and make him go to bed. Get to bed. You've got to go to bed to school, you know. Because Jerry Lee and... and uh, Mickey Gilly and uh, Jimmy Swaggart used to hang out together. They all play the same, you know. They used to go and cross the tracks and watch the black guys, the black music. And so, you know, they got influenced like that. But um, Linda Gales Lewis, uh, her bedroom was there with a bunch of stuff. She used to do TV shows and everything with Jerry Lee. And she plays all over Europe still in Nashville. She's sort of a star in her own right. She's done many albums and stuff like that. But there was a check on the wall from Elvis Presley for 5,000 bucks that he'd given to Frankie Jean for some reason. She never cashed it. It's a real check signed by Elvis too as his signature and everything. And then there was a a letter from Hank Williams I think to Jerry Lee uh, signed by him too uh, hanging in there. All kinds of stuff like that. Even the little potty Jerry Lee used to sit on when he was a baby. <laughs> and uh, violins and all kinds of stuff. And she was so nice to us. She said, well, if you guys want to go and get a motel, come on back later, and I'll leave the back door open. Um, just come on in and 
There's videos back there, Jerry Lee and everything. Make yourself at home. I'll be over doing something else. So you guys make yourself at home and and uh, mix some drinks and watch the videos. And when you leave, just shut the door and make sure it's locked on the way out. While we were there, we heard some gunshots down the road somewhere. She says, oh, there's people nowadays, you know. But anyway, uh, it was uh, that was so nice of her to do that. She never came in at night when we were there, but we got drunk and listened to all this Jerry Lee stuff. And then we went, uh, they had uh, next door, part of this house was there was like a building next door with an archway, and it was a drive through liquor store that her husband, uh, Marion, used to run. And uh, or she worked there too. Cause, uh, and so you just drive up and you drive into this building through one end, buy your liquor and drive out the other end. And they, uh, uh, it was kind of weird. Anyway, so we after we went back there that night and got drunk, and we were, I was so excited being there, seeing all my heroes stuff and meeting Frankie Jean Lewis. I couldn't believe I met her. And uh, we kept in touch for years and years and years. I have uh, many uh, um, postcards and stuff. She used to send me these handwritten postcards and letters. I had, I don't say many, I have four or five of them probably. And she used to glue things on them and paint things on them. She used to paint pictures and stuff like that at when she lived at home. But she... Uh, she used to draw stuff on and tell me stories about, you know, them singing gospel songs at Christmas when they were kids. She even sent me a tape once of Jerry Lee uh, uh, practicing with a bunch of guys, laughing and joking, drinking and playing all these songs. And what did Jerry Lee said to one of the friends or something about, if you keep, uh, oh, something like, oh, if you take your teeth out, I might even marry you. <laughs> another one he said one time at a concert when someone started hassling him he said hey you keep talking to me like that I might let you keep your wife <laughs> whatever that means anyway when the stores down there they used to sell hot peanuts in these because they grow a lot of peanuts down there that's where Carter came from the president Billy Carter and, and Jimmy Carter they had a peanut farm and so they had hot peanuts but one thing they did have was pickled pig's lips in little packages with in a brine or something. I bought a, a one and brought it back to Vancouver and I had it for quite a while. I guess I was living at Coon Towers by the time we went to Nashville. That's when I first moved at Coon Towers. Um, so I kept them in my fridge, but I could never get, get brave enough to try one. They looked pretty funny. And uh, so when we were in Faraday... After we'd partied and partied at Jerry Lee's house, and then we went back to this motel. We had we were drinking scotch and everything, me and Ed. And then I, uh, I don't know, I got so thirsty in the night. I, I drank water out of the tap or out of the ice water or something down there. Oh my God! I still didn't feel the greatest from eating those ribs up in Nashville or in Memphis. But man, I was so sick the next day. I don't know what happened from the. Uh, from the water, I guess, that's my excuse, not the scotch. Um, I was sick, so sick. I had to lay on the back seat all the way back up to, uh, we went up halfway to to Nashville and stayed in a hotel, and I was sick in the hotel, but we ended up having a few drinks anyway, and I was still sick. And then when we, by the time we got to Nashville, I was really sick. I threw up, I, I threw up so much that my ribs hurt. And I, all like nothing would come up. I just gag in the toilet, ah, ah. and I was so sick. Ed went down to the old strip the last night by himself and had a few drinks and looked around down there. And then uh, I was just too sick. And then we f- flew home after that. So that was my uh, experience down there. And then Frankie Jean and I kept in touch for many years after that. And uh, she used to write me letters, and I'd send her stuff and talked to her on the phone once in a while. And even when I was with Marsha, we used to phone her once in a while. She was so down to earth and nice. I never got to meet Jerry Lee. I wish I could have. But anyway, uh, I could have, if she was still alive now, if I went down there, I could have. She even offered to let me live at her house once. Why don't you come down and stay with me and help me look after the museum? 
but she was always kind of digging for money off people to help her keep that place going. I don't think Jerry Lee ever gave her much money. So, and nowadays I keep in touch with Linda Gale, her sister, and uh, she did a lot of performances with Jerry Lee. Linda, she plays like Jerry, you know, she's a foot up on the piano and does all that stuff. So, I sent her some of my stuff here and there. Um, I actually sent her a piano trick I invented that even Jerry Lee doesn't do. But nobody's ever done the uh, backward piano like I do. And not anybody. Anyway, uh, that was my all I can think of for now from the... Uh, that thing is... The Mississippi River is pretty neat. Big and wide and beautiful. So anyway, that's my story.